everyone. Welcome to our program. My name is Chelsea McKinney and today I'm going to be your host as we explore all the different types of technology that conservation professionals use to observe wildlife. Today I am at the home of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service where our job is to protect wildlife, all sorts of wildlife including plants, animals, and their habitats to help protect endangered species. Well today, I'm standing in front of a beautiful eagle's nest. Now these eagles have become a part of our service's history for the past eight years. We have a tall sycamore tree that the eagles have chosen in order to be able to see far away. This makes for the perfect location for these eagles to catch fish right out of the Potomac River. These eagles are awesome. Adults actually have a seven to eight foot wingspan and they weigh about eight to 14 pounds. The female is typically larger than the male and the distinctive white head and tail feathers appear when the eagles mature at around four to five years old. Now bald eagles are believed to live about 30 years or longer in the wild. They mate for life, building huge nests on top of large trees near rivers, lakes, and other types of wetlands. The adults will often return to this exact same nest year after year, making additions to the nest every single year. Now some nests can reach up to 10 feet across and weigh up to 2,000 pounds. Now that's about the size of your average car or even a hippopotamus. Eagles feed primarily on fish, but they'll also feed on ducks, rodents, and snakes. Both the male and the female build the nest, but the female actually chooses the nest tree. We're here with Jim Siegel, a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist here at the National Conservation Training Center and our eagle expert. Jim, thanks for being with us here today. You're welcome, Chelsea. Can you go ahead and talk to me about how many eggs typically an eagle's nest will have? Eagles typically lay one to three eggs, usually two. Both parents incubate the eggs and they're gonna sit on the eggs for 35 days. Okay, and then once those eggs hatch, can you talk to me kind of about how long the young will stay in the nest and what that feeding process is like? The babies are gonna be in the nest for 11 to 12 weeks. Both parents are gonna feed them and they, it, it's a very delicate uh, process in which they're literally breaking the food into very small little pieces and around the fletching time the babies really start to flop around and really flap around exercising their wings and as soon as they leave the nest they're going to be staying in the area for six weeks still being fed by their parents and they learn to both fly and feed on their own. Jim, why were the bald eagles an endangered species and why and how have they become such a conservation success story today? Eagle populations started to decline severely in the 1940s because of the invention of DDT, a, a very strong pesticide. It caused the eagles' eggs to thin and they weren't able to hatch their eggs. Starting in 1978, the eagles were put on the endangered species list as the population had declined to about 450 pairs in the lower 48 states. The pesticide DDT was banned because mm -hmm. of its impacts on birds and other wildlife. By 1995, because of the ban on DDT, the eagle population had recovered significantly and there was about 95,000 birds uh, around that time period. In 1997, the eagles were delisted to threatened. And then by 2007, the population had recovered so greatly that they were able to remove the eagle off the endangered spe species list altogether. Today, there's about 200,000 birds in North America with Alaska having about a quarter of them. Awesome. Well, Jim, thank you again so much for being here with You're us welcome. today. You're welcome. It was fun. Hi everyone, I've got Ryan Haggerty here, a video producer at the National Conservation Training Center. And Ryan and I are standing um, in front of the sycamore tree where the eagle nest sits over a hundred feet high. Ryan, you've got all this awesome equipment. How do you go about installing a webcam in this eagle nest? There's a lot of different ways, but it all ends up with you getting from the bottom to the top of a tree or wherever the nest is. So the most simplest way is you take a rope and a weighted object and you throw it over the limbs and you pull your rope up and of course you have to have a nice heavy harness <laughs> and be able to ascend into the tree. Um, a very cool way to get into the tree 
as well is to use a bow and arrow and nice. especially out west um, you can shoot this over a tree limb and then pull your rope up it's kind of like the hunger games right? <laughs> right and so our arborist has decided the only safe way to get up there is by a crane and a big bucket truck so we actually drop an arborist into the nest from above it has to be clean so every year someone has to get up there and clean that camera readjust it that's very cool. Ryan, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank we really you. appreciate it. There are a variety of reasons we use cameras in wildlife study. Some cameras are set up for law enforcement to catch poachers who take wildlife illegally. Others are for biological purposes to see animal behaviors and feedings that we could never see otherwise. Other biologists can use this technology to track migration, like with a pod of dolphins. Our eagle camera, for instance, is being used for educational purposes. We're gonna give you a taste of all of this, and we'll talk to a variety of different people working in a variety of different careers, all helping wildlife in some form from all over the world. We'll look forward to being with you next episode as we venture in and see the endangered manatee up close and personal at Crystal River National Wildlife Refuge in Florida. Thank you all so much for being with us today. We'll see you next episode.